Welcome to chapter four, exponents and irrational numbers. So here we go. 4.1 deals with integer powers of 10. So a power is just a way to write repeated multiplication. So this one right here, 10 to the third, is the same as writing 10 times 10 times 10. And remember, mathematicians want to be efficient. So they would rather write 10 to the third or 10 cubed than 10 times 10 times 10. And this is the same as 10 times 10 is 100. 100 times 10 is 1,000. So whenever I think of powers and exponents, I think of really big number and really small numbers. So let's just take a look at this. This is a telescope, and it's actually at the Palomar Mountain Observatory. And so if you ever get a chance, I definitely would go there. So a telescope is used to find really big numbers or really big distances. And then we use a microscope to find really small things. So this one, I found this picture, and it was a uh, microscopic picture of an onion. So thought it was kind of interesting. This is powers of 10, and if you go to my website, which we will later, you will see a video. It's kind of a classic that deals with the powers of 10, and it goes really big to the universe, and then it goes really small to the cellular, cellular level. So I think you'll find that pretty interesting. So let's just take a look at these um, numbers and see if we can find a pattern. So let's look at 2 to the 5th is equal to 32, because that would be 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2. So I want you to pause the screen and take a few minutes to see if you can find a pattern within each of these. Okay, so coming back, we would see that 32 and 16. Hmm, what's the difference between that? Hmm. Well, if I take 32 and divide it by 2, I get 16. Now, 2 times 2 times 2, 2 to the third power, 2 cubed, is 2 times 2 is 4, 4 times 2 is 8, so this would be 8. 2 times 2 is 4. Hmm, 16 divided by 2 is 8, and 8 divided by 2 is 4. So if I notice that the pattern that's happening is I'm dividing by 2 each time. So if I take 4 and divide it by 2 just to go down and continue the pattern, this would be 2 because 4 divided by 2 is 2. Now, if I take 2 and again continuing this pattern, 2 divided by 2, not 0, it's going to be 1. So kind of an interesting pattern. Let's take a look at the 3 to the power of 5, to the power of 4, 3 cubed, 3 squared, 3 to the 1. Let's see if we can find a similar pattern. Hmm. So 243, let's see if that divided by 3 is 81. So just off to the side, I'm going to go ahead and show that. So 243 divided by 3. 3 goes into 24 hmm, 8 times. Bring down 3, 1. Oh, interesting. That is going to follow that same pattern. So I'm going to divide by 3. Let's see what this is. 3 times 3 is 9. 9 times 3 is 27. Okay, and it doesn't really stand out to me if 81 divided by, by 3 is 27, so that's okay. We can write this old school. 3 goes into 8 twice. 2 times 3 is 6. Oop, give us 2 and 1. That's my little arrow. And that is 7. Oh, 27. So that does follow that same pattern. Okay, so let's go ahead and continue that pattern. So this, if I take 23 and divide it by 3, would be 9. Yep, and we know 3 times 3 is 9. Again, if I follow that same pattern, divide by 3, that's going to give me 3. Oh, 3 to the first power is 3. Just like 2 to the first power is 2. And then 3 divided by 3 is 1. Hmm. So if I notice this, well, let's go ahead and finish 10 to the power of 5 and the 4, 3, 2, and 1 is 0. And see if we see that same pattern. 
So 10 to the third power is 10 times 10 times 10. So that was like that one we had before. Oh, 10,000 divided by 10. Yep, it's 1,000. 10 squared is not 20, it's 10 times 10. So that's going to be 100. Yep, if I take a 1,000 divided by 10, that gives me 100. If I take 100, divide that by 10, that's going to give me 10. If I take 10, divide that by 10, not going to give me 0, it's going to give me 1. So if I compare these, I can kind of notice something interesting. Anything to the power of 0 is 1. So 3 to the 0 is 1. 10 to the 0 is 1. Hmm. And then 2 to the first power is 2. 3 to the first power is 3. So hmm, anything to the first power would be itself. So let's take a look at 5 to the 0 power. That would be the same as 1. 5 to the first power would be the same as 5. So technically what was happening is we were dividing by 2 at each step. And we stopped at this. But the pattern would technically continue. And past 0, if you were looking at it on a number line, would be negative 1, negative 2, negative 3. But I would continue that same pattern. So it's kind of interesting where these are going to be your larger numbers where you have your positive exponents. Hmm. And then when we get to our negative exponents, we have really small numbers because this is going to be less than 1 because I'm going to take 1, divide that by 10, take that and divide it by 10 again. So these are all going to be your really small numbers. So what I think is interesting is, let's see, 2 to the negative 1, that's just 1 over 2. So if I had 5 to the negative 1, I can carry that same pattern, and that would be 1 over 5. If I had 5 to the negative 2, that would be the same as 1 over 5 to the second power, because 4 to the, would be 2 to the second power. So kind of interesting. We're going to want to keep those in mind when we solve these problems. So let's go ahead and write these in what we call standard form. So standard form is, you can kind of think of that expanded, expanded form. So 10 to the fifth power, that's the same as writing 10 times 10 times 10 times 10 times 10. Now, the great thing about multiplying by 10 is you know it's going to be a 1, and then it's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 zeros. So it's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 zeros. Hmm. So 10 to the 5th is the same as 100,000. So let's look and see what happens when we have 10 to the negative 5th. So that would be the same as 1 tenth times 1 tenth times 1 tenth times 1 tenth times 1 tenth. I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So that would be 1 over 100,000. Now remember, this number is going to be really super small because it's less than 1. But again, notice it's still 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. still gives me um, 5 zeros. So the way that I would write this as a decimal is going to be Let's start with our 1 here. I'm going to move my decimal over 5 places. So I go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And I fill it in with my zeros. So 10 to the negative fifth. I like to think about 1, you're going to go to the negative. So you're moving. To the but your decimal is kind of right here so it's a little bit tricky the way you have to think about it so it's going to go one two three four five and when we practice with the calculator you'll see that one 
divide it by 100,000 is really this really itty bitty number right here. So let's take a look at this one. 10 to the negative 7. So that's going to mean I'm going to start here at 1. It's going to be a really itty bitty number. So I'm going to go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Put the decimal here. So I'm going to have 1, 2, 3, oops, 4, 5, 6. And some people like to include that 7 to be behind the decimal, or in this case, it would be in front of it. So again, this is a really itty bitty number. Another way to think about it is how far would it take you to get back over here? So you have to have seven spots. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, so now let's we're gonna go reverse. Because remember, mathematicians want to be efficient, so they're not gonna want to write these huge numbers and out like this. They're going to want to try to abbreviate as much as possible. So I know it's going to be a power of 10. So I'm going to put 10. And I want to count how many zeros I have. I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So this would be the same as 10 to the 9th. And again, you could think about it go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 to get to my 1. Now, this one, again, we want to write in that standard form. This is an itty bitty number, so I know my exponent has to be a negative. Whenever it's a small number, it's going to be negative. Whenever it's a big number, it's going to be a positive exponent. So what I want to do is bring this decimal all the way to this one. So I'm going to go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So this is going to be 10 to the negative 6. And again, it's really itty bitty, so you know that it's going to be a number that's less than 1. And this guy, little guy right here, again, I'm going to go 1, 2, 3, so it's going to be 10 to the negative 3. Now, it's a little bit interesting that you don't necessarily have the three, um, you can, if you think about this zero out in front of the decimal, then yep, you would have your three um, zeros, and that would help you with this three. Again, six would be one, two, three, four, five, six, that would give you that negative six. So we want to use the negative exponent whenever we can. So the way that I would write this is 1 over, this is really 10 times 10 times 10. So this is 10 to the third power. But if I want to write this as a negative exponent, what Mr. Slack likes to think of is that it's not happy where it is, so it wants to move. And the only other place that it could move is up. So to move it up, it's going to be the same as 10 to the negative 3. If we went back to our pattern, we would see that that is actually the case because it was 1 divided by 10 times 10 times 10. So let's take a look at this one. This would be the same as 1 over 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 10 to the 6. So if I wanted to use as a negative exponent, it would be the same as 10 to the negative 6.